Now we're going to discuss how that box was seized upon by Tiller and uh, go through some of the meditation-based studies. Okay, so Dr. Tiller, extremely credible fellow, a Stanford emeritus, a worldwide crystal expert. I am told that most of Silicon Valley was seeded literally, if not metaphorically, from his labs, applied materials labs at Stanford. One of his most uh, notable students without attempting to leave anybody else out. The one I'm most aware of is uh, Craig Barrett, <laughs> who runs uh, Intel, of course. So Dr. Tiller has a lot of credibility. At the same time he came out to California in the 70s, he started a separate line of psychoenergetic research, which ends up in this. And I was associated with him in this period, 2005, 2006, when he asked me to rebuild the devices that we're talking about into the next generation. Turns out I'm still asking questions about this first generation. All right, so let's talk about the paradigm case. Paradigm case here, just disregarding all the replications, trying to make it as simple as possible. You have a group of four meditators sitting around this box that we have right here, uh, the earlier version of it, and meditating on that box for about an hour with the protocol to raise with the intention that it caused a beaker of water to raise its pH by one point. They sign it up and sign seal, deliver the intention, wrap it in foil, ship it across country, put it next to your beaker of water, and over the next two weeks, that beaker of water, pH changes in according with this chart right up to one point. Not 0.3, not 0.5, not 1.65, but in exactly accordance with the numerical intention. Repeated, repeated, repeated. That's what I'm going to leave out because there are four, four nice books to read it in. Pretty amazing stuff. In trying to control the experiments, he ran into some troubles. The devices would entangle even despite his best intentions to shield them. And they, he had a lot of sites going around the world, so they, all the devices started entangling. So these intentions are spreading from Minnesota to Florida to California. They're entangling across the continent. That indicates some sort of weird quantum effect. Not satisfied to merely alter water with his mind, Dr. Tiller addressed the team to altering a single target chemical here and was able to change a liver enzyme reaction. And then by specifically targeting three chemical subcomponents of fruit fly development, the intentions that they developed were directed to these chemicals, wrapped it up, sent it over to the fruit fly incubation place, and they matured in 80% of the usual time. So you have effects on physics, you have effects on chemistry, you have effects on biology. And by the way, ALP is a precursor to cell division. Okay, here's a summary of Dr. Tiller's work that he gives. At points three and seven, he knows that there's a difference between above and below ground entanglement. At point four, he says the entanglement can go to 6,000 miles. Point four, he reasserts is non-electromagnetic. Point 10, he asserts that he used mu metal, which is the thickest we have. Uh, that uh, even that wasn't sufficient to shield. You know, shielding is a big topic in itself, but in any case. All right, here's something really interesting. I, I told you that I put the device next to your beaker of water, and it changes pH. Well, it turns out if you take the beaker of water away and take the device away, and you put a new beaker of water in that place, that physical location where the test took place, for up to two years afterwards, that beaker of water will change its pH which means there's been a alteration of the fundamental physics of the space itself. This is very, very important. I had worked with Dr. Schiller, we couldn't agree. I sort of gave up, put my stuff on the shelf, and then Dean Radin came out and announced at Santa Fe one day that he had verified all my stuff worked. Uh, as you can see down here, they take monks who have trained with the Dalai Lama, have them focus on the boxes, very much like this, it's a copy of it, and they use that to enhance chocolate and they've built a business on that. In review, there's some problems. These meditation-based studies are all very intriguing, but they're not really replicable. This team of Mason Patterson worked very closely with Tiller to try and replicate it, they couldn't. Tiller was quite critical of them. And then Raiden himself also relies on monks and shamans. Our position, is that that's all very good, but don't talk about making a business about it. Gee, sorry about last week's production, the meditator had a headache. It just doesn't work. Making it real is what 
this whole thing is about. The problem has been there's no way in psychoenergetics to objectively measure this stuff, intentions, conditioning of space. There's no independent way to replicate the experiments. So the research has been stalled. It doesn't have credibility, and it doesn't get appropriate attention by business. So I split from Tiller. We have to industrialize psychoenergetics by getting past the gatekeepers and getting past all of the fortune tellers. We're going to prove it with stuff that you know very well about. What's important here is that we are focused. You'll see at the end, there is a focus here on applying this stuff to all these key areas that we're interested in making money on.